Hello Brian and thanks thanks for your video which I'm now going to respond to. Um, so your video was on rebirth and the thrust of it was that that karma and rebirth are essential for understanding Buddhism and Dharma. I agree with you that karma is is essential for understanding Dharma. It's it's a key part of the causal structure of of the moral and mental universe. I think we agree on that. Um, but you then instantly take karma to mean karma moving on into the next life. You, you fully acknowledge that there, there are going to be other lives after this. And you say that it's wrong view, as in it's, it's not correct, correct dharma practice, um, to, to believe other than rebirth. And that's, that's really the point I take issue with. I'm, I'm a Buddhist for, for eight years. I, I completely don't believe in, in rebirth. And um, yeah, I do 100% I do believe in dharma. So, if I can recall, I'll just go through your, through your, your video and, and address the points. Um, so you say, I mean, I think the important thing before, before the important thing we need to remember is that, that, that it's a philosophical issue about rebirth. It, it doesn't matter um, to the practice of Dharma, and to the practice of the Noble Eightfold Path, whether or not rebirth is true, it's, they are still the same um, it's, it's the same moral, mental, philosophical, contemplative life that Buddhists are supposed to leave um, and lead. So, so that doesn't matter. In the same way as really this debate between science and heaven just doesn't matter because we can never ultimately know one way or the other whether whether we're all ideas in in God's dreams or some some you know quantum fluctuation from Big Bang. At the moment, it just seems completely inaccessible to us. So. So it, philosophically it is interesting though, and I think spiritually it's interesting, because a life that has no um, future life after this is a very different life to one that does in terms of the experience of that life. Okay, so have, having said that, um, you say that there is no analogue to, to rebirth in the West, and this is the reason why um, this is, it's not really discussed much by Buddhist teachers and monks and, and scholars and what have you. Now, I think you missed the point there. I think the reason it's not discussed is because it doesn't really because because rebirth doesn't really fit in with Dharma, and there are actually um, very similar concepts to rebirth in the West in terms of Christian heaven or Viking Valhalla or Egyptian afterlife. You know, all of these things where some change in our behaviour in this life will affect our quality of the quality of our next life. And that's profound, you know, that is profound in terms of a, a political tool, it's in profound in terms of a kind of social tool, and, in a, and, on, and on an in, interpersonal level, it, it profoundly affects the way we, we behave and, and, and live our lives, it would seem. So it is important, and the, the reason that um, it's not discussed, I don't think, is because it's, it's a strange concept. I think it's because it's a concept that doesn't fit in with Dharma. Um, so that that that's the reason why I think that you you say that the idea that Buddha was a materialist or a nihilist etc um, was was discussed and you kind of poo poo it. You you talk about these old books um, that, that mention this idea as if to say that um, these nihilistic ideas were around long before the time of the Buddha. Therefore, the Buddha wasn't um, wasn't originating any new idea if he was in fact a nihilist. But this misses the point that, that I think the Buddha clearly acknowledges that there, there were nihilistic philosophies around the time, just as there were um, mystical, mysterious, esoteric philosophies around at the time. And that is what the middle path is. He, he pretty much says this, I think, in, in the first sutra, that it is, it is you know, going, going the middle path between the, the hedonistic, nihilistic, pointless, destructive life and the... Um, Kind of fruitless, painful, mystical life, because you know that it is. It's about this this compromise that one makes in terms of self mortification or what have you. I, I don't think it is literally. Um, it is. It is literally talking about talking about the physical actions. It's talking about the philosophical viewpoints. So, so he, he does acknowledge um, nihilistic views. He does acknowledge mystical views, and he says the the way through them. Is, is to, with meaning, is the middle path, the Noble Eightfold Path. Um, so what, what that means is that, um, for me, the, the point of, of Dharma is that it starts with a renunciation of the idea of rebirth. 
So for, for me, my, my personal take on Buddhism is to, to say there is no rebirth, to, to absolutely acknowledge, to declare to myself, this is my last life and it is short and, and all I can do is to kind of maximize its, its goodness in, in the way the Noble Eightfold Path um, really clearly and beautifully describes. So it's a completely different take on, on your take. I do think it is compatible. I um, do think there is historical evidence that supports my take on it, such as the fact that rebirth was around for you know, literally millennia before the time of the Buddha, as were the nihilistic views. Um, I think it's. I think there's a lot of evidence in the sutras, um, the mirror of Dharma. This this often undis undiscussed. Um, I've got a book up there called The Mirror of Dharma, and it doesn't actually mention the mirror of Dharma in it. But the mirror of Dharma is where the Buddha says that the start of the path to enlightenment, to, to make yourself bound to enlightenment, you need to declare and you need to know that this is your last life, that you're not going to come back in in any realm of suffering. That, that this is it now. That's a kind of clever handover, I think, between the old ways of of rebirth that, that kind of Ananda's questioning him about, and then this new way without rebirth, without committing to saying there is no rebirth. The Buddha is saying it, it doesn't matter whether or not there's rebirth. What's important is you know you're not going to be reborn now. So it's it's a personal personal commitment to this rather than a kind of sweeping philosophical statement. So I think the mirror of Dharma is a really important important part of that. But also we can see, if you look to the Four Noble Truths, where, where is rebirth mentioned in there? It's not really mentioned in, in the Noble Eightfold Path. It's not, it's not at all mentioned in, in the, the idea of the three marks of existence. It's not mentioned in, in the Buddhist theory of mind. It's assumed in the Buddhist theory of causation, but I don't see that um, it, it's in any sense needed for that. So what we have is we have this really innovative philosophy and and morality and psychology the buddha pioneered that that steers this 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 path through these two extremes and um the question of rebirth becomes avoided but that doesn't mean that there is rebirth and it certainly doesn't mean that if you, that you can't be a buddhist or whether that's important but you can't be a buddhist if you don't believe in rebirth um you know and i think this is an important point to take that you that it's not wrong view to um to think that don't forget the buddha is is often saying in key passages how we need to light our way using science and reason and wisdom and knowledge and none of these have any support for rebirth um there is there is no support for rebirth the kind of the kind of inquiry the kalama sutra suggests doesn't offer any support for rebirth it seems that rebirth is completely unsupported in buddhism and it must be taken as faith which is fine it's it's not for anyone to say to anyone you can't have any faith in anything but it's it's important that that doesn't that faith doesn't become then dogma to say you have to believe in rebirth to be to believe in dharma whereas i think frankly the the buddha didn't believe in rebirth and taught that that re renouncing rebirth was the start of of this path of of dharma so there you go it's a different view to yours and um i doubt you'll agree but hey ho <laughs>